Good morning, everybody. Thank you for joining us here at Pioneer Valley Baptist Church. Whether you're here in person or watching by internet or listening by radio, we're going to stand together and we'll get started with a, a chorus to start things off. Song number 356. The words will be on the screen. We'll sing the chorus to Because He Lives. Because He lives, I can face tomorrow. Because He lives, all fear is gone. Because I know He holds the future and life is worth. Just because he lives. And we'll go right into our first song, song number 564. He keeps me singing. We'll sing the first and last verse. There's within my heart a melody. Jesus whispers sweet and low. Fear not, I am with thee. Peace be still. In all of life's ebb and flow. Jesus, 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 sweetest name I know, fills my every longing, keeps me singing as I go. Soon he's coming back to welcome me, far beyond the starry sky, I shall wing my flight to worlds unknown. I shall reign with him on high. Jesus, 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 sweetest name I know. Fills my every longing, keeps me singing as I go. All right, you didn't know you were going to be the choir opener this morning, did you? And I heard some of you singing, when this is over, you're going to have to get in the choir. And so, uh, glad to have you out this morning. We are practicing social distancing. I appreciate everyone wearing masks, and thank you for not congregating. And we're trying to uh, work through all these things as you are. But what a victory God gave us. And uh, if you haven't been following it, the governor wasn't even considering churches in the first stage. And uh, pressure from the president and from the pastors in Massachusetts is what he said caused him to do it. And so thank you for your prayers. Thank you for being part of the service today. Whether you're in your car out in the parking lot, joining us by internet, or here in the service, and this is a great crowd. I was not expecting a crowd this large. as uh, uh, They were making people fearful of coming in contact with anyone. And boy, I am so glad that God is that high on your priority list. Let's pray and get things started. Lord, thank you today that we can gather in your name. Thank you for the freedoms that are God-given and not government-given. Lord, I pray that you would bless the service today through the singing, through the preaching. Help each one of us to go out and be a blessing to other people during this time. In Jesus' name, amen. You can be seated. And since we're celebrating Memorial Day, we'll sing a patriotic song, America the Beautiful, song number 587. Oh, beautiful for spacious skies, for amber waves of gray, for purple mountains, majesties above the fruited plain. America, America, God shed His grace on thee, and crown thy good with brotherhood from sea to shining sea. Six. 
possess renewableness and every king divine. I have a few announcements. Uh, thank everyone, first of all, for being here. And if there's anyone here that's a first-time visitor, I, it looks like everybody's familiar, then you can take a card in the back of your pew there and fill that out and get, drop that in the offering at the end when you go out the doors. The ushers will be there. If you haven't turned your cell phone off, please do so, so we don't cause a distraction. Uh, child care is provided for each service. If your children start to become distraction, please use the family room in the back. And then also, if you pay particular attention, the service changes. So for the next month or so, our services will be as follows. Sunday morning, 9.30 and 10.30, and both services are the same. Sunday night at 6 p.m., Wednesday night at 7, RU is Friday night at 7. There will be no children's programs right now for a while, but please follow their kids' programs online. We will keep everyone updated as changes are made, and just thank you for your understanding during this time. Springfield Pregnancy Care Center. So we're still doing the fundraiser, uh, but we're just not doing it the normal way we did it before. So if you'd like to donate, please feel free to donate through the offering. You can give cash or write a check to Pioneer Valley Baptist Church and make a note on the check or the tithing envelope that you put it in so we can make sure those go. So all donations will be sent directly to Springfield Pregnancy Center after Father's Day. So if you still want to give to that, you're welcome to do so. Just make sure and designate it. Uh, the ushers will be at the door to collect your tithes and offerings on your way out. Uh, you can still give online, text, or by mailing if you'd like to do so. Thank you. Just one last announcement. We do have the bookstore will be open. There are music CDs out there. And uh, the fellow that my daughter's dating at Bible College, they did a Spanish music CD. And so that's $10, and plus our regular church CDs, books out there on marriage and relationships. Please get that. Birthdays, Abby Dychuk's birthday is today. Vincy Varhees is on Monday. Mason is on Tuesday. And Elizabeth, your birthday is Wednesday. And so, and Bob... And Angela, celebrating 53 years of marriage. And so, is that right? All right. And so, uh, you look a lot younger than that, Angela. And so, um, we, we are going to do a video tonight for Memorial Day. It'll be online. We weren't able to get it to work this morning because of technical difficulties. But if you served in the Army, Air Force, Marines, Navy, Coast Guard... National Guard, would you stand at this moment? We want you to stand. We want to recognize those folks, ladies and men that have served. Let's give these folks a hand. Thank you. You can be seated. And we do want to recognize their service and the fact that our country would not uh, be free if it hadn't been for people that sacrificed their lives for the freedom we have. I also want to add to it, and I know it's not part of Memorial Day, but uh, thank God for first responders, uh, for nurses and EMTs, for doctors, for, for firemen, people on the front line. So if you're part of that group, nurses, doctors, paramedics, firemen, would you stand at this time uh, because we want to honor you. I know we have a fireman in here, and I know there's a nurse sitting over here. Stand up, Victoria. All right, anyone else? Thank you. And uh, many of these people don't want any credit at all, and we understand that, but we want to take the time to recognize uh, people that give of their lives. And of course, uh, the greatest gift that Memorial Day, I feel, is all about is the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, he gave us, the sacrificed his life for our eternal destiny, and so we want to thank God for the greatest gift of all. All right. We'll sing one last song this morning, song number 81, Draw Me Nearer. I am thine, O Lord, I have heard thy voice, and it told thy love to me. But I long to rise in the arms of faith and be closer drawn to thee draw me nearer 
nearer, blessed Lord, to the cross where thou hast died. Draw me nearer, 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 blessed Lord, to thy precious bleeding side. Oh, the pure delight of a single hour that before thy throne I spend. When I kneel in prayer and with thee, my God, I commune as friend with friend. Draw me nearer, nearer, blessed Lord, to the cross where thou hast died. Draw Please take your Bible this morning. If you don't have one, you can use your phone. In uh, Matthew chapter 16, verses 24 through 28, and we're still on our, our series, Biblical Advice for Daily Living. I'm going to ask you to stand out of respect to God's Word. We're going to read the even verses together. The odd verses I'll read. Matthew chapter 16. And one of the things they ask us to do, we did remove the Bibles, we removed the hymnals. Normally the words will come up, but we've been having a little trouble with our internet connection today. Uh, But uh, we're going to persevere anyway. Begin with me, if you would, Matthew 16 and verse 24. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. Whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. For what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father with his angels. Then shall he reward every man according to his works. Verily I say unto you, there be some standing here which shall not taste of death till they see the Son of Man coming in His kingdom. Let's pray and you can be seated. Lord, thank you for today. I pray you'd help each one of us in our lives to be uh, going the direction you would have us to go. I pray this morning as we examine uh, Matthew 16, deny ourselves, take up our cross and follow you. And Lord, help us to decide that's going to be the direction of our life. In Jesus' name, amen. You can be seated. Half a century ago, two simple words declared a truth that's planted in our hearts. And every time the flag is raised, we've been honored to repeat the phrase, so the world will know we are under God. Through every trial and test, we are sheltered by the mercy He chose to give in privilege and abundance. This nation lives under God. Freedom has survived under God. We need to recognize. Indebted to his care, maybe more than any people, any time or anywhere, still our only hope and prayer is under God. 
when we pledge allegiance now, it's under God. Those words have shaped the land that we hold dear. Some insist it's not allowed to acknowledge that we need him now. But But it has has never been been so clear under God. America's been blessed under God, brought through every trial and test. We are sheltered by the mercy he chose to give in privilege and abundance. This nation lives under God. Freedom has survived under God. We need to recognize we're dependent on his goodness, indebted to his care. Maybe more Anytime or anywhere, still our only hope and prayer. Under God, freedom has survived. Under God, we need to recognize we're dependent on His goodness. To his care, maybe more than any people, any time or anywhere, still our only hope and prayer, still our only hope and prayer is under I was just talking to my wife this week, it was about nine years ago this week uh, that we traveled up here for the first time, and when I got directions, somebody said, listen, it's simple, Uh, you live in Baltimore, Massachusetts, just get on 95 and go north, Uh, you'll catch a side road, 87, go to 84 in Connecticut, and then get on 91 and you'll be here in five and a half, six hours, no problem. How many of you know uh, that the the apartment buildings in the Bronx are ugly? Uh, We sat in traffic on 95 for 45 minutes in New York City. And I thought, wow, that's got to be the worst of it. That wasn't the worst of it. We got to 84 in Connecticut, and it was under construction. I think it's still under construction (laughs) nine years later. Uh, a, a trip that was supposed, and then we got to 91, and then the, the interchange between Hartford and Springfield was backed up. It took us eight and a half hours. And boy, by the end of that trip, I said, I am never going that way again. I'm going to find some better directions. Do you feel like that in your life sometimes? Do you feel like, man, I've been been following the directions, and then you come to find out you're following your own directions. You know, the Bible tells us that happened in the book of Judges. It said, every man did that which was right in his own eyes. Boy, we need to be careful in this day and time that we aren't substituting some of our directions and mixing them with God's direction and coming up with the direction that we think is right, we perceive is right. No, it needs to be exactly what the Word of God says. Jesus says three things. Deny yourself, take up your cross, and follow me. And by the way, that doesn't happen before salvation. That happens after salvation. Because the Spirit of God does not live in you until you are saved, and you do not have the power within yourself to do that without the Spirit of God directing you to do that. Now, why is that important? And I I really wish I had the time today 
to go through it, but I want you to realize this country was founded on Bible principles. Did you know that? Noah Webster, uh, Webster's Dictionary, the, the great politician said this, the religion which has introduced civil liberties is the religion of Christ and his apostles. This is genuine Christianity, and to this we owe our free constitutions of government. Do you know we had to write a letter to the governor of this state reminding him of what the Bill of Rights says that are God-given rights and not government-given rights? I wrote him a letter reminding him of what the state constitution of Massachusetts says. I wrote him a letter reminding him of the 1993 Freedom of Religion Act. It is appalling to me this morning as a pastor that the mayor of Chicago made fun of what the president said Friday when he said churches are essential. It's appalling in our nation today that we have governors that don't understand the very basics. And, and I have four pages of statements made by the founders. No other nation has been founded like America. Do you realize that? This country was found, do you realize till 1963, the McGuffey Reader was the uh, uh, basis of teaching our kids how to speak English? Do you know the McGuffey Reader, if you go back and study it, every uh, letter of the alphabet was taught through a Bible verse? Uh, just over and over again, Patrick Henry, we hear, give me liberty or give me death, but we don't hear the context of the whole statement when Patrick Henry said, we have God-given rights, and they're through the Bible and through Jesus Christ, and as for me, give me liberty or give me death. They're trying to remake American history. And if you and I are not careful, and we don't follow our God-given directions, which are not old-fashioned, they're eternal, don't, don't, don't let someone, don't let some quote-unquote theologian confuse you. Don't let some church denomination confuse you. Don't let people confuse you and say, oh, well, your pastor's out of touch. He's old-fashioned. Hey, I may be old-fashioned, but I'm not old, okay? Uh, yeah, we're not old-fashioned. We're eternal. We're biblical. We're following what the Lord Jesus Christ taught in the Scriptures this morning. And we need to be careful. So many things. The Supreme Court of the United States opens every session with saying, God save the United States in this honorable court. Boy, they've made some dishonorable decisions, haven't they? Abortion on demand in 1973. And boy, on and on it goes. My faith this morning is in the Lord Jesus Christ. And I believe in Matthew 16, there's four thoughts that God gives us to help us to stay on the right direction and help someone else. Have you ever had somebody sincerely give you bad directions? Boy, they sounded like they knew what they were talking about. And you thought, man, I can follow and you follow them, you end up in the wrong place. How many of you, like me, get frustrated when you get a child's toys and the directions are in 48 language, everything but English? And I'm sitting there going, what, what in the world? How am I supposed to put this together? And so uh, I'm glad God makes it very clear how our lives can flow in the right direction. Number one, I want to help you out this morning. You can't lead where you're not going. You can't lead where you're not going. Then Jesus said unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. The book of Mark says, take up your cross daily. Not, not just Sunday morning, daily we're to take up that cross. Boy, that's uh, I, often I run into people all over the Pioneer Valley and they said, oh, pastor, I used to go to church. And I said, why don't you go to church anymore? He said, because they're all hypocrites. And uh, I said, well, uh, 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 big wise hypocrites, they'll tell you that it costs one thing, you get there and it costs something else. Uh, the car dealers, hypocrites, they have one car for 10000 the rest are 30000 And I said, why don't you quit buying cars and quit going to big Y? But I do understand what they're saying, and here's where I want to go with that. Matthew, Jesus was talking to the disciples, and the disciples said, 
Master, don't you know the Pharisees, the religious leaders, were offended by what you said? And Jesus said, hey, let them alone. Let the blind lead the blind. In other words, the reason that a lot of people say, hey, I've had it with Christ, I've had it with the church, I'm not going back, is because they have religious leaders that tell them one thing, but live another thing that stand up and preach one thing, and then when they get out of the pulpit, they're cussing and drinking and gambling, just like everybody else. And if we're not careful, we'll follow somebody that's in our image, rather than following somebody that's in God's image. Now listen to me carefully this morning. There are no perfect pastors. Thank you for not saying amen. Uh, There are no perfect people. But there is a perfect Savior and a perfect example and perfect directions to follow. You can't lead where you're not going. An elderly woman in a very large city was getting ready to cross the street and she was nervous and a young man came up and took her by the arm and said, could I cross the street with you? And to the woman's relief, she said, absolutely. But when they got out in traffic, people were screeching their brakes and honking horns. And when they got to the other side, the elderly woman looked at the young man and said, I I thought you were going to help me cross the road. What's wrong? Are you blind? He said, yes, I am blind. He said, I ask you to help me cross the road. (laughs) Now, that's humorous, but unfortunately that's true in a lot of people's spiritual lives. The people that you're looking to for leadership may be spiritually blind. You better be careful to make sure that we're not blind and they're not blinded uh, by tradition, by religious teachings, that they're following exactly what the scripture lays out. Uh, Number two, you can't lead where you have never been. If you look at verse 25, whosoever will save his life shall lose it. Whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. Boy, again, often people will say, well, I know what's right, but boy, that's difficult. I don't want to go down that path. I don't, I, I, I don't want to have to sacrifice. I don't want to have to do without. I don't want to have to... Hey, Christian, the Christian life is not about I don't want to have to. It's about I'm following Jesus, whether it leads through the valley or on the mountaintop. I'm going to follow Jesus, whether it leads through some tough times or whether it, uh, everything's uh, uh, great. Job said, uh, the Lord giveth, the Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. When did Job say that? When he lost everything. Lost his bank account. Buried his ten children. Sitting on a pile of ashes, scraping his wounds to get a little bit of relief from the pain he's in, and his wife said, curse God and die. And Job said, I'm not going to do that. Why? Because Job knew who he was following and why he was following. He wasn't going to let circumstances or someone else, and by the way, you can't lead someone to a spiritual place that you've never been. And by, by the way, it's not just the pastor's job to lead people spiritually. The last time I checked, the Great Commission is to every Christian. Go into all the world and preach the gospel, teaching them all things whatsoever I've commanded you. It's all of our jobs to teach people the gospel. And if we haven't walked that trail, we can't lead that direction. Unfortunately, many Christians have taken up the twisted philosophy of this world. And I've had people stop by our addictions program and say, well, well, pastor, you've never had an addiction. How can you help me out? I've never had cancer, but I know it's pretty bad. Uh, Well, you've never experienced what I've experienced. Life is not about experiences. Life is about following principles. I've seen the damage. I was a volunteer chaplain in the prison system in California. I've been in their homes. I've seen babies with uh, uh, diapers that haven't been changed in five days, cockroaches crawling all over children. And I won't go into any more detail than that because of the deceitfulness of sin. Don't tell me I need to experience sin. I've seen the results of it. 
And boy, as a Christian, we need to get that thing flipped around. And even if no one else in your house is following the Lord, you need to say, as for me and my house, we're going to follow the Lord. That doesn't mean you demand fellowship. It means you set the example. Hey, I want to be the spiritual example that I need to be. And when I'm not, my wife reminds me, hey, hon, could you work on that? And I said, yes, dear, yes, dear. Uh, and so uh, some of you fellows, it won't hurt you to learn those words, yes, dear. And some of you ladies could learn the graciousness my wife has for correcting me. That's all free. That's extra. Uh, God tells us, hey, you, you can't help people if you haven't been through the situation with biblical principles directing the way you're going. 2 Corinthians 1, 3 through 4, Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies, the God of all comfort, who comforteth us in our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. Do you know God doesn't allow trials in your life except for the fact that he's trying to teach you how to lead other people through those same trials. We live in a nation that is very self-absorbed today. Would anybody agree with that? It's all about me, and, and boy, it's not. It's about the Lord Jesus Christ, which leads us to number three. You can lead where the Bible needs you to. You can lead where the Bible needs you to. Philippians 4.13, we all know it. I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. That means that every single person sitting here, joining us by radio, joining us by the internet, you can live a godly, sober, righteous life that helps other people, that's a blessing. Now, I'll say this, I've met Christians that love to compare themselves among themselves, and the Bible says the people that do that are not wise. They like to compare the clothing they wear, the cars they drive, uh, how much money they put uh, toward church programs. And by the way, uh, we don't acknowledge any of that. I've tried diligently for nine years as the pastor of this church not to be a respecter of persons. And boy, I want to encourage you as Christians, keep your eyes on the Lord Jesus Christ. You can lead, and you can lead by being a good example. What am I talking about practically, fellas, when you're at work and other people are telling the dirty stories and talking about their filthy lifestyles, just simply walk away from that. And when they say, why are you walking away from that? I don't find that funny. I don't find the jokes funny. I don't find that lifestyle funny. I don't find that, hey, listen, I went to church. We had a good time, and I, I remember everything I did at church yesterday. Thank you very much. And boy, Christian, we ought to lead by good example. Uh, John 15, Jesus said, I'm the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me ye can do nothing. I've got a question for you this morning. If we're following the Lord Jesus, what's the fruit of your life? Really? You know when I go out to an apple orchard, I don't see apple trees with the branches standing there going, ooh, produce apples, ooh, produce apples. No. Apples are a healthy byproduct of a healthy root. Are they not? The last time I checked, they are. But I see a lot of Christians, oh, I'm trying to live a good life. I'm trying to hang on to God. I'm trying to do what's right. And boy, they have a very unhealthy spiritual life. And the fruit of their spiritual life is unhealthy. Now, I, I do love everybody. And I love everybody that attends our church. But you listen to me carefully. Church is not about fellowship. It's about fellowship. Fellowship is a natural byproduct of fellowship, And we need to decide, hey, listen, you look at your pastor. I will make time for you individually. 
Ladies, my wife will make time for you individually. We have a busy schedule, but I will set that schedule aside to spend time with you, to sit down in the Bible with you, to be your friend, to help you grow. But God doesn't expect us to sit, soak, and sour. He expects us to sit, soak, and serve. Get busy serving the Lord Jesus Christ. Every person in here is a leader. Boy, I, I mentioned this, but I'm, I'm going to say this again. I may get myself in trouble, but it won't be the first time I've done that. I am sick and tired of these spineless, macaroni noodle-backed governors that are afraid to stand for anything, and they're doing everything they can to keep things shut down because they're afraid they're going to get blamed. It's about time for some people to stand up and decide, hey, listen... We're going to lead and be leaders. Now, I believe in being safe. That's why we have masks, the social distancing, the ropes on the seats, the arrows for going in and out. We are trying to be as safe as we can. But I want you to understand the Bible says we are to gather together on Sundays. The first six weeks we did it for people's safety. Now the science is out. And now they're, they're, they're doing other things. Hey, listen, we're going to serve God. We were going to open next Sunday with or without the governor's permission. And I'm not being rebellious. I'm being obedient to God. Acts chapter 5, Peter said, we ought to obey God rather than man. Now, we do have some seniors that have health problems. God bless them. They're sitting in the parking lot listening by radio, and I appreciate that. I want them to be safe. We have other people that are home that aren't feeling well. God bless you. We want you to be safe. But if you can go to work during the week, but you're not going to come into church because you're afraid there's something wrong with your Christianity this morning. Number four, and lastly, you can lead yourself to the next step. Boy, so often we look and see and say, man, I, I want to be a Moses, I want to be an Abraham, and, and forget the fact that, that Moses, there were a lot of steps till Moses became the leader. Acts chapter 7 tells us that. It tells us that uh, Moses was learned in all the wisdom of Egypt and was mighty in words and deeds. And boy, he went out and saw the children of Israel struggling and took it on himself to kill that Egyptian and deliver his, his uh, uh, family members and his friends. And they didn't understand and they said, hey, who made you a ruler? What was Moses trying to do? He's trying to lead in his own power. Then he spent 40 years, 40 years on the backside of a desert with sheep. And boy, when he came to that burning bush, God said, I want to use you. And Moses said, who, me? I, I, I can't talk. I stumble. Now, wait a minute. Didn't the Bible say he was learned and powerful in the words and wisdom? He put aside his worldliness and became a humble, submissive, godly leader like he should be. Hey, Christian, when you put aside that pride and you allow God to lead you the way you should... Moses was ended, ended up not only leading the children of Israel, God used him to write the first five books of the Bible. And may I remind you, he did that when he was past 80 years old. Boys, we, we've got this philosophy in America. When I hit 65, I'm retiring, I'm taking it easy. Uh, boy, uh, uh, if you're able to retire, praise God for that. But you ought to be busy. We have four or five retirees that have retired from business and they're busier here at the church than they were on their jobs. Why? Because they're serving God. We had four ladies sew masks so we'd have enough masks for everybody that needed masks. What is that? That's saying, hey, I want to serve. That's the kind of leadership we need, that servant leadership. Let me finish this morning for each one of us by saying this. Jesus Christ is the only way to salvation. Boy, you better not be... I grew up in church. By the time I was five years old, I'm not kidding you, my parents had us memorize over 250 Bible verses. I, I'd been in church. I knew the Bible. I'd grown up in it. I, there wasn't... I hadn't gotten into a lot of wicked sin by the time I was six years old. Everybody with me. 
But when I heard that Jesus Christ was the way, the truth, and the life, God spoke to my heart. I knew I was a sinner on my way to hell. There is none righteous, no, not one. And at that moment that I was convicted, I knelt down. I didn't just pray another prayer, add another religious thing. I put my faith and trust in Jesus Christ as my Savior. I haven't been perfect, but He has. And boy, He leads you. He will lead you all the way. Christian, God has called us to surrender, to separate, and to serve Him. Let me go back to what kind of fruit are you bearing in your life? Well, pastor, you don't understand. You know, we have to socially distance. I do understand that, but we can still give the gospel out. Uh, I, I'll give you a real quick personal illustration. I'll be done for the third time. Um, I had some dental work done. That dental work broke, and my dentist said, well, you know, they don't make fillings like they used to. And at that moment, I wanted to say something unkind, but I didn't. I passed the temptation up to say something unkind. And my dentist said, hey, didn't I see you on TV last week? I said, uh-oh. Uh, and, and it gave me an opportunity to witness to the dentist, the dental assistant, the office manager, and all the people, because I was their only patient at that time. Can I say that God's going to give you opportunities during this time to witness if you are surrendered, if you are separated to Him, and if you're going to decide to serve Him? He said, deny yourself, take up your cross, and follow me. Lord, thank you for this morning. Thank you for each person you brought our way. Bless them for being here. Bless those in the parking lot listening by radio. Bless those that are home watching by internet. Lord, work in each one of our hearts and lives. How many of you with heads bowed and eyes closed can rejoice in the fact that Jesus Christ is your personal Savior? Would you raise your hand as a testimony to that? Thank you very much. You can put them down. If you're joining us by radio or internet and you don't know Christ as your Savior, would you be willing to admit you're a sinner separated from God on your way to hell and Jesus is the only hope for heaven. If you'll bow your head and heart and not just pray another prayer, but pray the prayer, God be merciful to me, a sinner. Forgive my sin, come into my heart and be my Savior. He'll save you because of the act of faith. Christian, heads are bowed, eyes are closed. Are you surrendered? Are you separated? Are you serving? Have you denied yourself, taken up the cross and followed Him? Pastor, God spoke to me in the message in some shape, fashion, or form, would you pray with me about a need, great or small, in my life? Be honest enough to slip your hand up right now. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hands all over the room. Thank you. Lord, I pray you'd work in each heart and life here today. Lord, we can't have an invitation as we normally do, but may we, in our seats, make a decision that will change our lives forever. Help us to follow the simple directions you've laid out. Help us to yield to your strength, to your Holy Spirit that can empower us to do so. Help each person here today to go out different than they came in. Thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. If you would all please stand before Pastor comes and closes out our service. We're going to say our theme verse together and then also our closing chorus. We'll say the theme verse together, which is on the back of your bulletin. If it's up there, good, good. So our theme verse, starting with the reference, 1 Timothy 4.12. Be thou an example of the believers in word, in conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, in purity. Then we'll sing the closing chorus. I will sing of the mercies. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. I will sing, I will sing, I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord. With my mouth will I make known thy faithfulness, thy faithfulness with my mouth. Will I make known thy faithfulness to all generations? I will sing of 
the mercies of the Lord forever. I will sing, I will sing, I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord. Let me remind you of a couple things and we'll be dismissed. The ushers will be at the side door. If you have an offering, just drop it in on your way out. That way it's a no-touch thing. Uh, services are at regular times. I know last week we did a 4 o'clock in the afternoon, but that was before uh, they allowed what they're doing now. So 6 o'clock tonight, we're preaching a message on the will of God, how to be thankful in difficult times. So we're going to preach tonight at 6 o'clock, how to be thankful, thanking God for everything that's going on. And uh, invite other people out. We have room at the 9.30 service. We still have a little bit of room here at the 10.30 service. Wednesday evening, no children's programs. We're going to ask everybody to try to social distance as we're exiting. So just take your time, uh, slowly exiting. I'll be out in the parking lot. I'll bump elbows with you. Won't shake your hand. Uh, we're not allowed to do that. And so we're glad you were with us today. The bookstore will be open. My wife will be out there. If you want to get one of the CDs or some of the books, just go out this door and come back in the other door for the bookstore. God bless you. We love you. Have a great day.